We have reporting here. You may have seen some of it late in the day. The sexual abuse case against Donald Trump late today led a New York jury to find Trump liable for sexual abuse and defamation against Eugene Carroll. This historic judgment continues a legal reckoning for the former president, who is also awaiting a criminal trial in the same area, New York, for an unrelated case. This jury unanimously sided with Trump's accuser, believing her account, backed by other witnesses, on the key issues of the sexual abuse she alleged and Trump's lies about her in response to her allegations. The jury holding Donald Trump liable for that defamation based on a social media post. Another measure of legal accountability at a time where we've seen these increasing calls for tougher legal penalties for, among other things, the malicious falsehoods and various types of lies that can be used to demean, to attack, and sometimes to endanger people. We will also tell you, because I want to run through all the facts here before I bring in our experts, the jury did not find Donald Trump liable for her accusation of rape. This new judgment, which again broke late today and is our top story as we juggle the breaking news, includes a hefty penalty. It's the kind of damages judgment that would actually bankrupt most people. About $5 million totaled up. It's a sum that is not likely to impact Donald Trump financially as much as this new precedent today that he has now been found to be a sexual abuser by a jury of his peers under the civil standard. Now, that's the legal outcome. Carol sought that exact outcome through this process. She did not speak publicly when leaving court today with her lawyer. She did release a statement. But what does this all mean beyond the person who won the case, Carol? That's one piece of this. But what does it all mean for Trump or even for American society? Well, there's no single answer to that that large question amidst this breaking news. As I mentioned, tonight we have expert guests who will weigh in, and coming up later this hour, we'll be joined by a veteran journalist who ended up testifying on Carol's side in this case. She was on the stand last week, taking a vow to tell the truth under oath about Carol and her assertions. So we will hear all of those views, but we do know that this revitalized feminist and Me Too movement directly was a response to Donald Trump's conduct, to his sexism, to the 2016 election where he became president through the Electoral College. It is also, of course, a response and a reckoning for historic and structural inequities that still endure, some of which were highlighted in this trial. And we know that a legal system which systematically underreports, undercounts, and under-enforces violence against women has now, at this late hour, started sifting through the public and infamous claims by Donald Trump about, in his words, his own conduct, which has now been deemed sexual assault by this jury. And this is the first time for that. It's a development that the New York Times notes in its breaking coverage of this judgment tonight, reading from a brand new article that, quote, more than a dozen women have accused Trump of sexual misconduct over the years, allegations he always denied. Carol's case is the first such claim to be successfully tested before a jury. As the Times reports, this was the first such test today. Carol passed and Trump failed. As promised, we are now joined by our experts on this breaking news story. Jill Filipovic is a lawyer, a journalist, and the author of The H-Spot, The Feminist Pursuit of Happiness. Nancy Erica Smith is a civil rights attorney who's represented Gretchen Carlson against Fox News and handled these kinds of cases. Uh, it's complicated, but the outcome, as the Times said, is the first time this has been tested in court uh, and Carol passed. He didn't. Yep. He's not Teflon Don anymore, finally. Women all over, I think, are really encouraged by this verdict. Um, people are noticing that the jury was unanimous, as it must be in federal court, that they only deliberated for about two and a half hours, which is a very quick. I've waited for juries. I always think my cases should be two and a half hours, but they never are. They're usually much longer. I thought we'd be days because uh, there were complicated issues here. So I think it's incredibly encouraging. Harvey Weinstein was found guilty. Bill Cosby was found guilty and got off on a, on a weird technicality. I think we are turning the tide on uh, silencing women and abusing women. And although Takapina did a good job of abusing Ms. Carroll and the other witnesses, I think we are really starting a new era, I hope. <laughs> 
I hope so too. And I was I was heartened by that exact point that Takapina did lead lean into this victim blaming defense. Why didn't E.G. E. Jean Carroll scream, for example? Um, and the defense was essentially, well, she's just a liar, and we say she's a liar, so you should believe she's a liar. And when you weigh that against all of the evidence that E. Jean Carroll's legal team put up, so E. Jean, Car e. Jean Carroll's claim, her friends who said that she called them and told them about what happened when it happened, other women who described being assaulted by Donald Trump using pretty much the same M.O., and then Donald Trump's own statements, not only boasting about sexual assault, grabbing women, but also in his deposition for this case, saying that it's perhaps fortunate that stars are allowed to do this. So with his own words, really, frankly, supporting the case that E. Jean Carroll was making. And when the jury was doing its task, which is weighing these two sides and saying, well, based on a preponderance of the evidence, which one is stronger... It shouldn't be surprising, although to me it was, that the jury said, oh, well, the side that presented a huge amount of evidence <laughs> was actually much stronger than the side that just said, no, this is a lie and that's it. Yeah, you're sort of reminding everyone what the jury's job is, which is not to go writ large about what they think of Donald Trump, um, but really to zero in on the evidence. And someone who agrees with you said something similar on Fox News today which is actually interesting. You know, there's so much cynicism or people think they know what the reaction is going to be. Um, so I want to keep both of our experts here and turn to that. We've been following the headlines of this story, which have been crossing the wires not only around the nation, but around the world. The New York Times, I mentioned some of their coverage. Their headline is Trump found liable for sexual abuse and defamation. The Post reports the jury sides with Carol. And then the Murdoch Empire's Wall Street Journal, you see their headline there. And on their TV channel, as I was just saying to Jill, a Fox analyst discussed... This case today, telling viewers the process was not a witch hunt, it showed the use of evidence, which was brought forward to a jury. Take a look. I don't think this is a case where he's going to be able to say that everybody had it in for him. It looks to me like this jury looked at this pretty carefully and came to a reasonable conclusion. That's a former prosecutor, Andrew McCarthy, basically crediting the process and the jury there. And I think that's right. I, I think at this point, one thing that certainly the Republican Party needs to be asking itself is that with Trump sexual misconduct allegations back at the top of the news, with women still absolutely livid about, the Ro about Roe v. Wade being overturned by a Supreme Court with justices appointed by Donald Trump, with this con confluence of events, is Donald Trump the horse that they really want to bet on in 2024. And I'd, I'd be curious to see how Trump's opponents, if he has them in the primary, react to these allegations, if they're even raised, or if the Republican Party has simply decided that their candidates being accused of sexual assault, sexual misconduct, is just going to be par for the course.